So this is a crazy topic, but it needs to be discussed because in 12 years, our generation is going to be in a heap amount of trouble if we're not prepared. What is going on guys? My name is Johnny and I just want to say thank you for watching this video. If you haven't done so already and you enjoy this content, hit that like button so I know what kind of content to give to you guys. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button and notification bell. That way you are notified when new content comes out. With all that said, let's go ahead and dive into one of the most frustrating topics of discussion financial education in schools. Now for those of you who work in the schools, this is not to diss you by any means whatsoever, but I'm simply just sharing my opinions as to why I feel that financial education needs to be prioritized in our schools. So if we were to look at all the different topics that we were taught in school, how much of it do we honestly use on a daily basis? Like many of us aren't gonna be thinking about pre-calculus or chemistry all the time, but I think all of us can agree that we use money and make financial decisions every single day. The reality is that we're teaching students subjects that honestly aren't as significant as money where we use it all the time. Now, that doesn't mean that we just remove all these subjects, but it does mean that we need to be able to prioritize things that we use on a regular basis. And the second thing that needs to be discussed is we need to figure out what kind of information needs to be taught to students when it comes to the financial realm. There's simply just so many different things to cover, and quite honestly, I think that's the reason why financial education isn't taught in schools. First, I think it needs to be taught that credit cards are not bad. In fact, they help us get loans for houses and cars. When people get introduced to credit cards, they think, Oh, credit cards are dangerous. I would agree that they are dangerous, but it's because of the user, not the credit card. And even though credit cards may be dangerous, we need to remember that we are constantly using our credit scores for so many different things. In order for us to get into an apartment or a house or get a car or any of those things, we have to have a credit score. Unless you already have thousands of dollars on you which I think for many of us, we don't have that. We need to teach people how to use credit cards effectively. And I firmly believe that if credit cards are used correctly, they can actually be beneficial to you. The second thing that needs to be taught to students is how to invest and not just how to save. Your money is actually losing value the longer that it sits in a bank account. Even though the average interest rate is about 0.06%, because of the 2% inflation, you are actually losing value every single year. So even though you're trying to put your money into a savings account and then try to build it up, you're basically taking two steps forward and then one step back. And the third thing that needs to be taught to students is how to budget. The problem is not in the fact that students don't know how to use a spreadsheet or know how to use a checkbook. The problem, honestly, is that students don't know how to use their money well. First, when a parent would say that you have to save up for a specific item, you would save up all this money and then use all of it in order to get that specific item, which then leads you to having nothing. And the second thing is that many parents, even though they're trying to protect their child, they hide their finances from their kids. And this honestly hurts a student because what ends up happening is they only see their parents spending money freely and then when they get a job, they're like, oh, I can spend my money the same way. Now, that doesn't mean as a parent that you just go show every single account that you have, but students should be able to see some of the moves you make and why you make them. But here's the major reason why financial education needs to be taught in schools. According to CNBC, Social Security is potentially running out in 12 years. So rather than relying on government funding, we need to make sure that we are wise with how we spend our money and how we invest our money. Because what we do now will affect not only how, but when we retire. Now, how is all that I'm saying going to affect my channel? I will still be sharing stocks on what I'm looking to buy as well as update you on any news that comes from the stocks that I currently own. But I also want to provide value to those who struggle recording and utilizing their finances because I know that there are some people out there that feel like that they don't even have money to be able to invest. I'm going to share how my wife and I have been able to save and invest thousands of dollars using several different strategies that go against the norm. And all that I ask is that if these videos provide value to you, hit that like button so then that way people get to see the different tricks and tips that I've been able to use. But thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.